I have been asked over and over again to try out Uno CSS as being a really cool way to add utility classes to your apps. But it just doesn't do that. It's a whole engine and it creates not just Tailwind, but it also does Bootstrap. It also adds classes for Tachyon and Windy. So I thought I would check it out and see if it lives up to the hype. So I'm going to create an app using it. I'm going to install it. I'm going to show you the presets and plugins that you should use if you want to use it. And uh, I'm going to give you my opinion on it. So watch all the way to the end. So as I've been playing around here, I went through the official documentation. So Uno CSS, as it says, is an instant on demand and Atomic CSS engine. And the way it works, it's very similar to Tailwind in the way that it ha has these utility classes that you can add into any attribute that adds in your margins and paddings, animations, things like that. But what makes this Uno CSS different is it kind of combines a bunch of these different types of utility class systems like Windy and Tachyon and Tailwind, and it gives you these plugins or what they're calling in here called presets, which allow you to add more functionality to it. And you can kind of mix and match what presets you want inside your app. So I think the best way to kind of demonstrate how Uno CSS works and why I'm really liking it so far is to give it a shot inside my app here. Uno CSS works with Vue, but you can use this in React, Svelte, pretty much all the major frameworks it supports and it supports it inside V2. So I'm gonna use a V app here with Vue 3, but this is actually gonna be a very similar way you set it up for React 2 if you're using React with Vite. And so we're gonna, with these presets, the kind of the one that you wanna use if you're using Uno CSS, Uno CSS is to use the preset Uno one. This will give you like the majority of the features that you wanna use. So first inside your app here, I'm gonna open up the terminal and I'm just gonna do this npm-i dash D Uno CSS. And this will install normal presets, not the community ones, and dash D for it's a developer dependency. So after you run that, and I already did that for this app, you need to go and do a little bit of configuration. So inside the Vite config, I'm gonna import in, and actually I'm gonna import in Uno CSS, just like this. And then inside your plugins right here at the bottom, we can add in Uno CSS and it has this object here and it has one of the first ones you want to use is presets and this presets will be an array of the presets you want to do and just think of presets like plugins and so the first one you want to use is this preset Uno one. To use that one you can from Uno CSS and if you look here you just type in preset you have all these different presets so preset Uno as you can see here is the default one. So now I have preset Uno here. I can add it in preset Uno. Now one thing I found really useful when using Uno CSS is to install a couple extensions. Uh, one of which is this called Iconify. Uh, so I would install this one. It's by Anthony Fu. I'd also install the Uno CSS one by Anthony Fu. And this will make it so that you have that really nice autocomplete. Now when I was using this, I found a, a, a problem that I had the Tailwind IntelliSense extension installed at the same time and those two were conflicting. So I disabled the tail, Tailwind one and only used the Uno CSS one. So if you're watching right now, I would, and using VS Code following along, install the Uno CSS and that Iconify one. Well, there's one more thing you have to do. It mentions right here, you, have, you need to add import Uno CSS in your main entry. So don't forget to not do that. So we'll go to the main TS and I'll need import in Uno CSS. And so if I do that, no more errors in the console. And if I come back over here to my Vite app. All right, so I just have this main hello world here. Not, nothing too special. I don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna add another div. I'm gonna do a test here. And let's see if we can play around with this test. So uh, with this text. So I see test here on the side. I can add a class to it. Now the nice thing is now we have access to not just Tailwind utility classes, but we have access to bootstrap classes. So first, Let's just check out Tailwind. So if we wanted to add in like a Tailwind utility class, it's already built in Uno CSS. We don't have to like add another library. So I'll, I don't know, I'll do margin left, I don't know, 10. And you can see here it added a, a margin left to the 10 there. If I wanted to, I don't know, text gray, well, let's do green. Cool, now it's text green 800. I could do text uh, extra large, let's do 5XL. Cool, so you could see here that all these classes that we use for Tailwind work. Another nice, and you can also see since we have that Uno CSS extension installed, we have this nice preview. It tells us the CSS it's generating, but we can also do other things. Let's say we wanted to 
use bootstrapped. So they have MS-2, I believe. So that adds in like margin spacing. If I come over here, yeah, I do margin inline start. So you can see here, I can add this inline margin inline spacing that you might be used to if you're using bootstrap. Also tachyon has this wave, like I can do MA5 and this does like margin 1.25. So you can have tachyon, also windy CSS. Like if I do margin top and then I just put in pixels, which is kind of cool. I could do por uh, 40 pixels here. It added 40 pixels to the top. This is also nice too if you wanted to do text, I don't know, 30 pixels. It just adds it in there. It's just part of, of uh, Windy CSS. So you have kind of access now all these utility libraries in one, which is pretty powerful, I think. Uh, and now and it's all built in. And when it compiles, it's only going to include the CSS that you use and not any CSS you don't use. So I think that's that's the first thing that kind of really makes this stand stands this out because it's super simple to use and you have now a ton of different utility classes you can use in your app. Now let's say you wanted to use another one of our presets here. So another one I found really uh, helpful is this preset preset attribute file in the V config. I'm going to add in here preset and you can see it's already here preset attribute file. And I just need to add it here. Now it should be added into my V config and I'll go back to the app view. It allows you to kind of group similar things together. So let's say I have like two texts in here. So, so we go back to our app, we have this test here and I have this text 30 pixels, but let's say I do text orange 400. So now I have this text orange here. So I can actually add attributes to my div tag uh, to make this a little easier. So I'm gonna put in text equals here and I'm gonna put in orange 400. And you can still see, I'm still seeing the uh, the IntelliSense and, and it doing everything there. And also I can put in 50 pixels, or I guess in this case, 30 pixels. And now I can just delete this class altogether. Oops, let me fix my beat config. I need a closing bracket. Okay, oops, I fixed some of my uh, column here for my Vite config. I went back in here, so cool. So you can see here it's working. I have 30 pixels, and if I change this to 50 pixels, it's working as I expected it, which is really neat. Now, another thing you can do is like, say I have a div here. I have another div, and inside here, I, I know I have a test one, and then I have a test two. So I have these two, but I want to add flex to it. So you can almost add in like style props in here. So I can just type in flex and this will add it in as flex. I can also add in, I don't know, justify center and it censors it on the screen here, uh, which is really cool. Uh, you know, you have now able to add these in. So now you have these attributes that you can just add in as like style props to your uh, to your attributes, which is really cool. And it's it just makes things really easy. For things like hover, so if I wanted to add a hover in here, I still put this in my class. So I'll put a class in here. So I'll do hover and I'll do, I don't know, text color. Uh, let's do, yeah, gray. Now if I go hover over it, so it still works. This is where I would probably still use class for some things and then use these uh, attributes for other things. So another one that I wanna recommend is Iconify. So you can install all these icons. And if I do an NPM I and I'll do Iconify dash JSON and then the icon set. So this one has pretty much hundreds of different icon sets. I'm gonna go through them all, but if you go through the GitHub, you can find them. So I'm gonna install one called EI, which is just a, a random icon set that I found. And then after you do this, I'm gonna restart the server again. Uh, you can go into your Vite config and you can install this preset for icons. So I'm gonna come back up here, preset icons. And right here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go preset icons. And if I go back to my app view, I can now start using icons. So in this class here, basically the class will act as the icon, i dash, e i dash, and then a name of the icon. So I don't know, we'll do pointer. And you can see here right away, you can see you could show it right here. It's This is a part of the extension that we installed for Iconify, so it shows it in VS Code. And if you look at the app, so now yeah, you can see here, this is the I, and then you can also add in uh, other attributes. So I don't know, maybe we do a height of 50 and width of 50. 
So now we have a big old icon of a hand. We can also put some colors to it. So text color, let's do text purple. And now it's purple. Uh, we can even do hover effects on it if we wanted to do uh, text orange 200. So now you can see here, and this is all done just using classes that we add on to here. So it makes it just really, really easy. And you can have access to any sort of pointer, uh, any sort of icon in this set and then use it really quickly. And so it, it's pretty powerful. And there's also a lot of configurations you can do with it. So one nice thing you can do, you can actually make tags to be names of, of your icons. So let me show you how that works. So if I go to, if I'm gonna save it here, I'm gonna go to beat config and I have one more preset I wanna install and that is called the preset tagify. And then I'll add it to here, preset tagify. And then I'll go back to, I'll save it. And then I'll go back to app view. When I create my tags, I can just call it the name of the, of the class. So I can do that I dash E I dash. And now I have a, it actually auto completes for me so I can find out what it is. Let's say I want to do Chevron. And if I do that and I do need it in, you have to set this in the settings, but I just do, uh, for this one, I do block. So make it a block so it shows up. So here, cool, I have this uh, this uh, this icon here. So I can do H50, uh, let's see here, we'll do H40 and width 40. So now we have our Chevron up. So I could do that right using a tag. And you can, you, you can do it if there are other things. So if you have an element that just has one class on it, I could do a text red here, red text. Now I have red text on here, I'm using basically uh, tags and I'm making them the classes themselves. So it's it's pretty neat what you can do here. Uh, there is some nice community ones too. If I come back here, there's community ones for like Daisy. If you're into Daisy UI, there's scroll bar hiding. There's a whole bunch of things. But I think if I'm starting a new project and I wanna try out one of these utility class libraries, I probably just go with Uno CSS because it has everything 